For those of you that are new this morning, welcome. You're very welcome here. Just to let you know that I am the pastor's wife, uh, better known as Sally. Um, so this morning, Tony gets to do the children. I get to, to share in here. It's because we value the children, and there's no reason why they shouldn't get the best or the leader anyway, as much as anybody else. <laughs> no, that's just to explain what's going on here. I'm going to start with uh, one of my favourite passages from Matthew. We are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything. It's set to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. We are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. As Christians today, we are the face of Jesus to the world. We are his hands we are his feet, we are his messengers, we are his ambassadors. When people look into our eyes, they should see Jesus shining out. Every Sunday, this building is open and we meet together as family. And we hope and we pray that new people will join us. And they are, and you're very welcome. We love it when our family grows when new Christians move into the area and choose to join us and put their roots down in this place. It's even more amazing when people who are not yet sure about Jesus and God and all that stuff come to find out what we're all on about. They may be invited to a service by a close friend or they meet or a family member or use the building during the week. Sometimes people experience a bit of God at a wedding or a dedication. God always shows up when we meet together. We meet together as church, God shows up, which is pretty good really. Hofet Fest next week will be no exception. On the Saturday, if we are here supporting the people that meet in this building, God will be here. When we enjoy and celebrate the creativity of the people that use this place, God will be smiling down. God will be here. The people that use this place have amazing gifts. I've never tried to fight with a seven foot pike stuff, but they make it look easy. There's not too many injuries. The pirates have been here four years practicing their stuff and we become friends with them. They are more than just users. The metal detectors, they do have some big fines. We haven't yet benefited, but I'm working on that. They have met here four years. We have had newer people, Creation Station, um, it's a, it's a country-wide franchise that, that helps little people, very little, people that I'm not terribly good with, doing arty stuff. She's an amazing lady. And she meets here every Thursday. So, on Saturday, we need to do our bit as a church. Jesus compares Christians to salt. Salt adds flavour. It preserves food. It makes it taste better. It takes what is good and makes it better. So when the community groups meet here, we should be taking what is good and making it better. We should be the best hosts they will ever meet. We, with our happy, smiling faces, willingness to serve, amazing barbecuing, we should be the very best because we are being salt and light in our community. 
As well as the group to use the building, we're inviting the members of the public to come in. For many people, this will be their first connection to the church. And we want them to feel welcome. We want them to know that we, within our congregation, contain the best cake makers in Newport. I won't be uh, adding to that one, though. <laughs> we have um, been given permission to put a Hubfest um, leaflet in every primary school child's bag at Summerfield. That may not sound amazing, but it is. They don't do church advertising. We're hoping to do the same at Barton, and have we still got leaflets to trust through? The local community. Um, there, there's quite a lot have already gone out. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have also been posting leaflets of welcome through the local community. So we're really hoping that people are going to come down and they're going to join us. Maybe people might ask us about God or church. And we should be ready to give an answer. But we must remember Peter's words of wisdom on this subject. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. People will be on various stages of their journey. They don't want to be cornered and preached at. They want to be loved and respected. The main objective is to build relationships with our community. People weren't cornered by Jesus. People came to Jesus. They knew where he was. They knew which hill he'll be preaching on, which boat he will be nicking. They knew, they knew where he would be. And they followed him. And they sat and they listened to him because they were drawn to him. People know where this building is. It's actually quite hard to miss. And what we want is for people to be drawn to us, not cornered by us. The whole fest is all part of the long game. We haven't got a point to prove, but we have got good news to share. People need to feel welcome and believe that they could belong to a church such as this before they will even consider what the message is. This week at school, it's been a long week at school, we were chatting about helping people who are struggling with their marriage. There's not much out there now. And what is out there costs an awful lot of money. And while we were there, I, I sort of kind of said, it's a bit of a shame really, because if people came down to church, we could help, or Jesus could help. And uh, I was really, really surprised by a senior teacher who said, well, we're a community school, and you're a community church, so why shouldn't you offer help to our parents through the church? That is the sort of connection and acceptance that we're looking for. Where a, where a school will accept that we're a community church and we may have something to offer. I was really excited by that. I kept very cool. Yeah, that was But, you know, it's exciting. It is exciting. Here in Matthew, Jesus calls Christians the light of the world. Jesus talked about himself as being the light of the world. He said, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but we'll have the light of life. Matthew says the same things. He said, we are like a city built on a hill. Together, as church on the roundabout, we should be a beacon to this town, a bright light in a world which has a lot of darkness in it. But we won't, don't want to be just some enclosed little beacon, separate, which people can see from afar, but never enter. We want to fling open our doors, and we've got plenty of them now, that all be open so that people can come in to experience the love and acceptance of God. And 
we're in good company. Jesus was called friend of sinners. They weren't very nice about him sometimes. In Luke chapter 7, verse 34, it says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, this is what people said about him, that he was a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her children. I'd just like to say here, Jesus never got drunk. This is just the insults that were thrown at him. He was seen with people that got drunk. He was seen caring for people that weren't quite the cream of society. But he never came down or arrived at that level. Jesus managed it to keep his integrity throughout. And so can we. I honestly believe that we will see fruit from this venture and from others before it. It may not be next week, it may not be next month, but like the verse says, I believe the children will come. When I was praying and preparing this, that's the word I felt that God was saying, the children will come, the people will come. So I'll share a little story with you. Many of you know Jamie, I've known him for years. Jamie is a committed Christian. His Christianity is incredibly practical and may not be seen at times to be very spiritual. However, he was at uni and it's Freshers' Week. Those of you that have been to uni are aware that that's where everybody goes out and gets drunk and comes back in various states. And he was looking as a Christian union. How could they attract the new people to their Christian Union. They're in competition, stiff competition with come to this night out, have this, do this, be free, and, you know, and all of this. And it's said, how can a bunch of Christians actually attract people in their first week at uni? And what they did, they decided they were going to be there on the Sunday and they were going to carry everybody's bags up the flights of the halls. Now some of those halls are six stories high. So Jamie and his mates decided that they were going to wait at the bottom and they were going to carry up everyone's luggage to the top. And invariably, he was going to be asked the question. And first of all, someone offered him a tenner. And he thought, this is good. But, you know, he resisted. <laughs> <laughs> he, did res he, he tells me he resisted. Um, and they were saying, so, so why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And Jamie's had years of church and the roundabout training, and all he said was, because God loves you. Because God loves you. And we are here at Christian Union to show that God loves you. And the story carries on because he met some freshers, um, new people that were coming in. As far as I know, they had no church connections. Um, and they said, will you come out with us tonight? So James like, and this is where it gets harder. But he did. Him and his mate went out with them for the night. Interestingly enough, they went to church in between. Because obviously, 10, 10 o'clock on Sunday, he missed his church, but his mate had, went to a church in Twickenham and it was on at 6. So he said, oh, we didn't have anything to do, so he went to church. Better man than I am. So he went out with them, had a great night. And as his Facebook showed, he woke up on the floor in one of the halls. And obviously everyone's a bit suspicious of that, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> actually it's because he lives in the next town and, and they said come and stay on our floor and that was actually in the room above where he first started uni so obviously there's a, then a picture on Facebook and you can imagine the comments on that as he wakes up on the floor so he says no, don't worry, I was just on a floor now the story is going on uh, since, since that time and he's met out, mysteriously enough he's gone out in, in Kingston and Quickman and three times he's met up with the same people that must be God. They don't know it, but God is drawing them. And they had their event, and we, I'd like you to pray about it, they had their the Christian Union event on Monday. And these freshers had said they're going to come to it. And that is all because they carried the bags up the steps. So I'm quite excited by that. And I think that is the way that we should function. Now, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely not against the moment that you meet someone and you just tell them about Jesus. That happens. It does happen. We've done years of, of that where it's just that one moment, you've met them 
and it just happens. But we shouldn't be under pressure to do that, because that's when it goes wrong. So we all have a great opportunity next week to just be ourselves and enjoy it. And, and that's what the difference is. So we all live very busy lives, and next weekend can loom large in our eyes. And we can be sitting here thinking, I've got this to do, I've got that to do, I've got that to do, I'm going to be tired, it's going to be difficult, I've got to teach all week, I've got to, you know, it is going to be difficult. But we should see this as an opportunity, because we have the best news ever. The famous verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. That is amazing news. Life can be a struggle day by day by day. I've had a struggle this week with the Department of Work and Tax Print, whatever they are. And, and you know, it was horrible. It really, really was horrible. But at the end of the day, all of this is only temporary. There's an, we, you know, Steve, Steve showed me his songs this morning. It couldn't have been better. I know that God was working so that I didn't have to sit there and go, no, don't do that one. <laughs> but actually, it is amazing, amazing grace. When well, we've been in heaven 10,000 years, it's still going to be fun. Yeah. I don't want to be here 10,000 years. Yeah. Because this life is getting really, really hard. Yes. It is getting hard. Enjoy it while we're here? Great. There's some good parts of life too. Be full of God. But actually, it's an eternity in heaven that we're promised. We know that everyone can have a relationship with God. Through Jesus, everyone can be forgiven. And by walking with God, we can experience the love, the joy, the peace, and the purpose that is lacking in today's society. But it sometimes seems so hard to bridge the gap between people's perception of God and church and the truth. To be honest, I find some of the most intelligent people have got the weirdest ideas about church, even about our church. I think, how can you still think that? How can you still think that people only come to church because they're desperate and dying and got loads of problems? The people are welcome in, in wherever they are. But I said to them, you know, there's some sane people down there. I said, we've got four teachers. I wasn't a staff. They were related. Four teachers in our church. Come on. We've got people that, that work in nursing. We've got people that, that do, that are going to start their businesses, that do so much. It's not just about, we've got nothing else better to do, so we're let's all go down the church. It's not about that. So Hogfest, like festival before it, is going to go a long way to crushing those ideas. People are watching us and our church, and they will be influenced by this event. Even if they don't come to it, they'll see it and they will be influenced by it. And they will ask you and they will say, what was going on down there the other day? It's a long game. It can't happen with just Martin, me, I expect I'll be here, and the other leaders. It can't just happen by us. It's, it involves all of us. What happens if I wake up next Saturday in a foul mood? It's quite impossible. And I might not be able to do everything. But the welcome we had this morning from Terry and Joan, that was great. That's the sort of body that we work as. So I'm asking you to come. I think it's going to be great. There's going to be lots of information over the next week on, on Facebook and, and all that kind of stuff that I don't have anything to do with. Um, and I think it's going to be exciting. I am really excited by it. And I believe it is our calling to this, to this town. We have been called to be the type of church that we are. This morning, 
the chairs were all over the place and my head was in the wrong place. I got out there, put that out, put that out. And I'm, I found myself explaining to people, why does it look so higgledy piggledy in here? Mm. And it's because we had a night last night, the acoustic cafe last night. And, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, we, we haven't got the chance to sit in and put it in nice little rows. We're going to have a party this afternoon and it's going to have a bouncy castle and we're all going to have to move the chairs again. And then on Monday, they're going to come in and do something and we're going to have to move the chairs again. But this is the blessing that we have and the privilege we have of being this church. There's always some practical points. Is there anything more practical you need to share? Or um, two, two things. Come and muck in. Just come and be part of it. Even if you don't have a particular thing you want to come and do, come and be, be part of what's going on. And the other thing is, if, you, if you're on Facebook, share it on Facebook. If you're not, take, or, or even if you are, take flyers, give them to your friends. It's, it's something really easy and safe to bring people to because it's a community event. It's not, it's not churchy. Um, and, and if you want to invite people to the blessing service on Sunday as well, great, go for that. And there's invites at the back for, for that. So, so take stuff. If all the leaflets go because people want to give away loads of leaflets to people, that's fine, I'll get some more printed. So yeah, the Sunday service is going to be you know, a chance. We're hoping that some people will come from Saturday to the Sunday. We'll have our, our guest of Barton Choir. Um, they love being down here. That's a local primary school up, up that side of the road. Um, and, and we're just hoping that it, it just extends, but it's an invite. So we normally do Back to Church Sunday. This year, we won't be doing Back to Church Sunday. Um, this will be the same thing. It, sh it will be one of Tony's special services where people will feel very relaxed <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy it because that's what it's about, isn't it? Um, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I know that people do enjoy enjoy just chilling out, chilling out with Jesus. Mm. I reckon if he was coming today, he would be chilling out. Yeah. He'd be playing the snooker and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, there we go. So that's the practical points. 